Welcome to the American Dream. These are Cain's lineage, serpent seed post flood. The royals have an ancient tradition whereby they did not replicate their reptile form. I just wonder if the lizard god statue in this image is a break from that custom. And we are here today thanks to a request by a viewer, King D. Brown, who said, do one following the serpent bloodlines, so I am at your service. And this feature is a scriptural, apocryphal, genealogical, geographical, ethnological study of the root branches and fruit of Cain's lineage since the Great Deluge. This means we will utilize a variety of resources and records of genes, regions, and national relationships to follow the serpent bloodlines where Holy Scripture serves as foundation for fact. And the reason <clears throat> for this presentation is to educate us about serpent bloodlines so we can better understand our place in Yahweh's creation and the plan set before us. This video is not intended for fostering ill will toward any person or people, but would instead encourage garnering love whenever someone offends us so we can live more toward the purpose we were called. Here's the basic outline we'll follow. Three race identification methods for early modern ethnicities, Japhetite origin and 13 bloodline hypothesis, maritime peoples, the sea people, connection to Khazars, Czars, and Caesars, to the house of Rothschild, the Ashkenazi, and picture of the unholy Roman emperors. Uh, but first, I would like to show three ways to identify race. The top example demonstrates the race by race method. Wikipedia says this is the oldest method used by people and it used three generalized groups derived from Noah's sons called the Japhetite, the Semite, and the Hamite. Underneath these three names, I included the origin for each one. Um, and many are familiar with the race identification by a color method <clears throat> that is shown in the center. And as far as I could gather, this method was not used until about the 18th century. And I noticed it only divides a very exaggerated range of Semitic colors at best. I could go on about how inferior this technique is because none of the five colors describes any race of people since the race's colors all vary through these and even wider color ranges like greens, blues, and even grays. Not one color can adequately describe any race, ever. Uh, the bottom method is race by class, and I like to use this method, although I'm not sure if anybody else does. Um, regardless, I should mention that no method to identify race is perfect. For example, while we have three main races, there are many mixtures, the identification of race by class is complicated by reptilian deceptions that use misinformation agents who pose as everything from exposers of corruption to homeless citizens. So regardless, it is best to view on the side of caution in regards race identification of individuals and as we see in a moment, groups of people as well. Oh, and this is the um, race class origin combination that I use most often to identify three general kinds of man. The Japhetite, who are serpent seed that are the elite. The Semite, who are Adam seed that are commoners. And the Hamite, who are Nephilim seed that are alien or subterrestrial. And now for insight into the people groups that came from Noah's sons, Wikipedia says, quote, 
the first century Jewish Roman historian Josephus, in Antiquities of the Jews, Book 1, Chapter 6, was the first known author who assigned known ethnicities to some of the names in Genesis chapter 10. His assignments became the basis for most later authors, unquote. So these are what we will uh, look at to familiarize ourselves with names given Noah's sons tribes. Uh, first, we look at the Semitic groups. So Shem, son, Elam are the Elamites and Persians, Asher, the Assyrians, Arpaxad, the Chaldeans, Eber, the Hebrews, Aram, the Aramites, or Syrians, Uz, the Tachanites, Gether, the Bactrians, Mesa, the Mesonians, and Lud, the Lydians. And here are the ethnicities Josephus attributed to the Hamite. Cush, the Ethiopians, Sheba or Seba, the Sabians, uh, Hibila, the Ebilians that are now called Getuli, Sabta, the Sabathans now called Astaborans, Sabtica, the Sabactans, Rama, the Rogmians, Dedan, the Judeans, Misrium, the Mestrians, Put, the, Lib the Libyans, Canaan, the Canaanites, Sidon, the Siderites, Amethyst, the Hematites, Arudius, the Arbidites, and Arucus, the Archites. The record goes on to note, quote, but for the seven other sons of Canaan, Chedius, Jebusus, Amorius, Gagesus, Eudius, Sinius, and Samarius, we have nothing in the sacred books but their names, for the Hebrews overthrew their cities, unquote. In other words, in Joshua's day, as recorded in the Old Testament, Josephus noted that the 12 tribes of Jacob slaughtered the Chesusite, the Jebusite, the Amorite, the Gergesite, and the Samarite tribes with a couple others. And that occurred in a struggle over territory, which crippled Egypt. And in the early modern ethnicity, Josephus equated Gomer to the Galatians or Gauls, Ashkenaz to the Reginians, Repath to the Paphagonians, Tagarma to the Phrygians, Magog to the Scythians, later called Goths, Medai to the Medes, Javon to the Grecians, Elissa to the Elysians or Aeolians, Tarshish, the Cilicians and people of Tarsus, Kittim, the, uh, the people of Cyprus, Tubal, the Iberians, later called Spaniard, and Meshach, the Cappadonia, Cappadocians, and Tiras, the Thracians. Further, Wikipedia states late century author named Gatterer explained in his famous text, uh, which title I would butcher if I made an attempt at, that quote, modern history has shown the truth of the biblical prediction of Japhetite supremacy in Genesis chapter nine, verses 25 to 27, unquote. And that <clears throat> we will look at next, but first, how Joshua 10 describes the Japhetite. And these are the sons of Japheth, according to their families, Gomer, Magog, Medai, Javon, Tubal, Meshach, and Tiras. These are the children of Japheth, according to their generations. And the children of Gomer, according to their cities, were the Fran Francum, who dwell in the land of Franza, by the river Franza, by the si river Sina. And the children of Repheth are the Bartonim, who dwell in the land of Bartonia, by the river Leda, which empties its waters in the great sea Gihon, that is Oceanus. And the children of Tugarma are ten families, and they live with their fa and they, and these are their names: Buzar, Puzanak, Bogar, Elikanum, 
Ragbib, Turkey, Bib, Zubak, Agma, and Tilmaz. All these spread and rested in the north and built themselves cities. And they called their cities after their own names. Those are they who abide by the rivers Hithla and Italic unto this day. But the families of Angoli, Bagral, and Parzanak, they dwell by the great river Dubni. And the names of their cities are also according to their own names. And the children of Javon are the Javanim, who dwell in the land of Macedonia, and the children of Medai are the Oranim, who dwell in the land of Kurson. And the children of Tubal are those that dwell in the land of Tuscana, by the river Pashia. And the children of Meshach are the Shabashni, and the children of Tiras are Rush, Rushash, Kushi, and Angolus. All these went and built themselves cities. Those are the cities that are situate by the sea Jebus, by the river Kira, that empties itself in the river Tragon. And the family of Elisha are the Almanim, and they also went and built themselves cities. Those are the cities situate between the mountains of Job and Shabathmo. And of them are the people of Libardi, who dwell opposite the mountains of Job and Shabathmo. And they conquered the land of Italia and remain there unto this day. And the children of Chittim are the Ramim, who dwell in the valley of Canopia by the river Tibru. And the children of Dudanim are those who dwell in the cities of the sea Gihon, in the land of Bordna. These are the families of the children of Japheth, Japheth, according to their cities and languages, when they were scattered after the tower, and they called their cities after their names and occurrences, and these are the names of all their cities according to their families, which they built in those days after the tower. Noah prophesied when he awoke from a drunk and knew what his youngest son Ham had done when he stated, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servant shall he be to his brothers. He also declared, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. May Canaan be the servant of Shem. May God expand the territory of Japheth. May he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. So Noah blessed all of his sons, but at this point in these passages, he first cursed Ham's descendants, the Nephilim. Next, he blessed the humans and made giants their servants. And as a side note, I heard aliens have an instruction manual about how to serve humans. And finally, Noah blessed serpent seed with world rulership and neatly placed them over positions of power with their father, Lucifer. the bearer of dark light. Okay. This is a general outline of mosaic population studies from Wikipedia that tells about the spread of the tribes from Noah's sons. And it makes a couple of interesting statements. The first is part of the introduction that states, quote, it is not to be forgotten what Genesis 9 Chapter 9, verses 25 to 27 states that the Japhetites, as their name indicates, were successfully spread by Noah as a result of their victories, that they also have size in Semitic countries, and that the Canaanites, like the Semites, would be subservient. The ancient and modern stories clearly show how this has been literally fulfilled, unquote. And the final statement at the, in the document reads, quote, Over time, and in part even before Moses, the Hamites became very restricted primarily through Semitic tribes, whom they had to give way in Arabia, Abyssinia, and more recently also in Canaan, and here and there to withdraw from Asia where no countries were entitled to them, forced or exterminated, unquote. And of course, the Japhetite origin begins after the flood with Japheth and his serpent seed wife, and from them descends the serpent bloodlines. The 
And this chart shows Japheth with his seven sons and their sons, because the most common way to follow family lineage is from father through the son. We are told there are 13 royal bloodlines, and if that's true, while there may be other theories, they could be within these 13 primary Japhetite tribes listed by Josephus that we looked at a few mo uh, moments ago. And Genesis 10, 4 and 5 says, from these, the maritime people separated into their territories according to their languages by their clans within their nations. And therefore, we will refine our focus to Jaffa's son, Gomer, and the serpent bloodline that came from his son, Ashkenaz. So here are Ashkenaz and sons, Bekal, Sardana, and Anak. Um, Hebrew Nations at Britam website says, quote, Ancient Rome played an important role in early European history. It still does. The ruling classes of Europe were raised until recently reading Latin literature. The early Republic of Rome was replaced by the Roman Empire. The first emperor was Julius Caesar. In his honor, all future emperors were also known as Caesar. The terms Caesar from Germany and Tsar from Russia also derived from the name Caesar, unquote. Yes, these are real Nazis, not the acronym, but a royal bloodline called the Ashkenazi Jews. These include leaders such as Hitler and Trump. Um, we should make, take a, make a quick comparison between these serpents and humans that are Nazis versus Semitic Jew origins. While Semitic Jews come from Shem through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 human tribes, Ashkenazi Jews come from Ashkenaz, Gomer's son through the line of Japheth, uh, who are the synagogue of Satan. Um, this Roman emperor chart traces Ashkenazi leaders of Western Rome from Julius Caesar's to Charlemagne and then list the Holy Roman Emperor since then. And in addition, an article online titled The Ashkenazi House of Rothschild and the Complete History of the House of Rothschild by Andrew Hitchcock and Alexander Light provides a detailed timeline on these royals and their pursuits over the last few centuries. The article says, quote, the Rothschilds claim that they are Jewish, when in fact they are Khazars. They are from a country called Khazaria, which occupied the land locked between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, which is now predominantly occupied by Gorgia." Unquote. My question is, have the Khazars controlled empire finances, the Ma monetary and economic system since the, Khazar, the Caesars. Uh, also, by most estimates, about 85% of Jews are Ashkenazi or Khazars, and oftentimes commoners admire members of the royal families. Occasionally, for whatever deep-seated insecurities, humans emulate rulers, adopt their surnames, simulate their appearance, and more. Uh, it is for these types of reasons the author made a request to the viewers of the article that lists these most influential Rothschild family names, where he urges, quote, Please, therefore, do not automatically assume someone you see with the name Rothschild or any of the names listed above are part of the Rothschild criminal network. Furthermore, and most importantly, the majority of Ashkenazi Jews are innocent and not part of this network, unquote. So by Julius Caesar's death in 44 BC, the empire controlled regions in and around Europe as shown on this map in colored areas. Wikipedia says the Ashkenaz listed in the Hebrew Bible was quote, first associated with the Scythian region, then later with the Slavic territories, and from the 11th century onwards with Germany and Northern Europe, unquote. 
Also, uh, History.com says, quote, The Byzantine Empire was a vast and powerful civilization with origins that can be traced to 330 AD, when the Roman Emperor Constantine I dedicated a new Rome on the site of the ancient Greek colony of Byzantium. Byzantium. Though the western half of the Roman Empire crumbled and fell in 476 AD, unquote. So, in other words, the Western Emperor Constantine selected a new capital for the Byzantine Eastern Empire called New Rome uh, just a hundred years before the fall of the Western half. Okay, well, Jack Rackham explains very cleverly how the Empire of Rome never did fall. Using the Emperors of Rome family tree chart we saw a few moments ago and animation describing various emperor shenanigans like putting generals in charge that were princes and sometimes illegitimate heirs, uh, having power struggles among other royals, and controlling Western Rome and the entire world for over 2,000 years. And I recommend uh, watching his video on YouTube called The Fall of Rome and How It Never Happened. Here are the empire's overlaps that show the main empire denominator as West Rome in red, the ever-present denominator of the Western and Eastern worlds. One thing that is consistent about Rome's history is a continuous rift between West shown in red and East shown in orange. In fact, it begins to look more like this, where each section is a continuation, more than a complete break, like the bottom leg that we see the Byzantine Empire as its inception was referred to as, quote, New Rome, unquote, so not so much as a broken leg. And while the tribes of Javon controlled the unified empire of Greece depicted in the lower body, it appears the tribes of Ashkenaz defeated their tribes and established the new empire of Rome. As the image in the book of Daniel shows, the legs that represent Rome are divided from the start and apparently a direct effect of the widely varied Eastern and Roman cultures. And <clears throat> whereas the legs of the statue are iron, the feet are mixed, iron mixed with clay. And while all the empires before were only state-controlled, now there is a mixture of church and state. It has the strength of iron, but does not bind together. In addition, there is plenty of speculation on what the ten toes represent. There's probably more than one correct interpretation of the feet and toes, but one of the more popular theories is the ten toes, as the ten toes, is the emergence of ten economic unions in the works by the United Nations shown here. Uh, this is how serpent seed bloodlines accomplish one world government, the ultimate beast system, with Satan's children in places of power this goal has been sought after and slowly executed over the course of more than two millennia. This is a current depiction of the Western European region where all the monarchies are marked with yellow icons. These are places like the United Kingdom, Spain, and Norway. The places marked with a crown are kingdoms that have an actual monarch that oversees the country. The places marked with the yellow dot are also monarchies but are ruled by princes and other titles, not an actual king or queen. Traditionally, the kings and queens in Europe seek the highest position as Holy Roman Emperor because it elevates the monarch above the others in Europe and the world in their minds. Monarchs have been selected as emperor in the past from some of these kingdoms, and the position is usually kept until death. And the reason we know we still live in a Holy Roman Empire is shown in this image where Queen Elizabeth was coronated or crowned by the Pope in 1953. She is one in succession of this title of Holy Roman Emperor that has gone on virtually nonstop since Charlemagne, recorded as 800 AD. 
uh, even while European royals covet this position, at the same time, contrary to what we might think of this ceremony, this is not one that some emperors actually enjoy because it demonstrates the ruler's subjection to papal power. Of course, the rise of Christianity and serpent bloodlines infiltration of the new faith and their ability to manipulate their captive commoners made the Pope the most powerful person in the world. As we see in the image, the head of one of the most powerful families on the plane is below the Pope. So past emperors have were known to find this position distasteful. In fact, in 1798, when Napoleon sacked Rome, he sent the Pope at the time into exile. Then the world believed the papal power was dead, but this was the deadly wound that would heal spoken of in the book of Revelation. So essentially the papal office rose from the dead and by now regained all the power it had before the injury. And this is a royal family tree chart for Northeastern Europe, for regions like Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Poland, Lithuania, Hungary, Bohemia, Serbia, Croatia, Romania, Bulgaria, Kievan Rus, and Russia. It starts at the top with several dynasties and shows descend descendants to modern royals. And this is both West and East Roman Emperor family tree charts. For current royalty, West includes England, Scotland, Great Britain, France, Italy, Prussia, Germany, Austria, Spain, Portugal, Netherlands, and Belgium. It begins at the top with Charlemagne and the first, uh, the first Holy Roman Emperor and shows how the royal houses descended to modern families. And just as you saw a stone being cut out of the mountain without hands that shattered the iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold, so the great God has told the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy.